and welcome to CHS this Sunday. As a Sunday morning for me, it might not be for you, uh, but really glad that you have been able to connect with us um, today and however this finds you. For those of you that um, don't know me, my name is Zane. We have Jill and Winnie that are taking us through worship this morning. Um, Katie Wade is able to, is to continue our sermon series through Genesis and the life of Joseph. And we also have Brendan, who is playing the role of our roving reporter, catching up with people in our community that are doing amazing things. Today, he catches up with Westlake United Churches Trust, Voloshny and Austin, and uh, the amazing work that they are doing in the Westlake community. If you are interested in supporting them and uh, finding out more about what they do, they run a wonderful home-based care program that partners with the Department of Health. Please do find their details in the description of this YouTube video or else you can contact CHS and we will provide those details for you. A few people have also reached out seeking prayer ministry and I'm sure there's many more people that are seeking prayer ministry as well. Paul and Charmaine Rodemeyer have kindly put up their hands and said that um, their home group is very willing to run a prayer ministry for anybody that is looking. Please do also find their contact details in this description again or else just contact us at, at the church. There is a very exciting Young Adults Alpha starting also this Tuesday. That's Tuesday the 12th of May at 8 p.m. Alpha is a wonderful invitation into a conversation. A conversation about the meaning of life, a conversation about who Jesus is, a conversation about church and the Bible and, and what it all means. And who doesn't have more of those questions or some of those questions because of this lockdown period, if not for other reasons. So if you're interested in that, also please get hold of me or else there's a contact, um, there's a Zoom link that is in this description as well of the video and, um, and join us on Tuesday night. Then just before we get started with worship, I'm just going to read from Psalm 31. We're going to do verses 1 to 5 and then 17 to 18. And then we're going to go into worship with Jill and Winnie. O oh Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be my rock of protection, a fortress where I will be safe. You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Pull me from the trap my enemy set for me. For I find protection in you alone. I entrust my spirits into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are faithful God. Then verse 17, don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in the grave. Silence their lying lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. Father, as we just come into a place where this morning we seek your heart more intently, we try to silence, silence some of the other distractions and noise and, and draw a little bit closer to you. We pray that, 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 you would, that you would be drawing closer to us. And we pray that, that even in this, 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 this distant isolation, and lockdown, Father, that, that we would, through this time, be drawing together as a community, as one church that is com completely and unifyingly seeking your name. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Zane. Um, before we go into the first worship song, um, I just want to acknowledge that although we've 
been working on it during the week and um, recording it together and we're not live all together singing just to encourage you into this space of worship as best you can in your own homes and I know myself it's hard sometimes to engage in worship on these services and in this time generally and I really miss being all together in one room um, but I'm just really praying that the Holy Spirit would um, be at work in each of us now as we sing this song Reckless Love um, about how, how God is singing over us and he knew us before we were born and um, before we loved him he first loved us and he chases us down. He leaves 99 sheep behind and goes to find one lost sheep. And that's what we mean when we say reckless love. Of course, God's not reckless, but he, um, he does what seems to us to be outrageous when he, when he, when he seeks us out and, and chases us down. And so this song is just a response to that. And um, I hope you're able to join in in some way. Winnie and I have been working, Winnie very um, working hard in her space to, to try and find a peaceful corner to record this. So thanks, Winnie, for doing that. And Lord Jesus, I just want to pray now for everyone present here today, someday, or whatever day it is today in your world. And I pray that you would just join our hearts to worship together um, in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shut 
no wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Only overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights the long from leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. So um, thank you so much. I just want to say a huge thank you to Veloshni and Austin um, for joining us today for this quick little interview. Um, they both work for the Westlake United Churches Trust. Uh, Veloshni is acting or interim manager there at the moment after Richard Sainer sadly passed away earlier this year um, and has really been thrown in the deep end in a big way um, <laughs> in the middle of this pandemic. Um, and then Austin Wiley as well. Um, who is uh, one of the drivers for the home-based carers, um, doing a lot of transport um, around the community. Thank you so much um, to the two of you for joining us. Um, give us a wave, Austin. <laughs> Any specific <laughs> things that we could be praying for Westlake as well? Yeah, I can say people that are very, very, very hopeless. You can pray for encouragement and uh, so that they know that they must look up to God, does, that God can help them, and uh, they must trust. They must also must pray for the trust so that people can trust God, and also also pray for wisdom for our leaders so that they must have that wisdom of working together as a one team. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Thanks, Austin. We're definitely be praying for that. I think it's a huge challenge um, because you're trying to do a whole lot of new things. <laughs> coordinate with lots of different people everyone's trying to help but it's actually quite hard work to get it all to work together that's, that's for know. sure so no, we'll definitely keep you in the prayers um, and Velocity, just to come, come back to you again um, just as, as we close any other specific guidance for us just as we pray for you and also in terms of what practical support you could uh, you could do with I think prayer is very vital we need mass prayer because the community is, you know, it has a different lifestyle and a different mindset. And so there's a lot of entitlement. There's a lot of jealousy when we give out food parcels. Our staff get attacked um, because some of them, 52 of our staff live in the community itself. You know, so we just need to pray that everybody loves each other, shows the love of Christ in the community and understands that if their household has enough, that they need to allow us to give food parcels to those that are really, really struggling, that they need to differentiate themselves from those that are really struggling. And mm. uh, so there's mm. always jealousy and fight at the gates, but we've just been very encouraging. We've, we've tried to display the love of Christ, the support of Christ. We've seen lots of good fruit emerging in terms of kindness and love from outsiders donating to us. And we're trying to display that to the community, but it takes a lot of time at the gates trying to educate on social distancing, wearing a mask, not entering our buildings. So people now understand that they can't break lockdown. <laughs> They've been breaking lockdown for five <laughs> weeks and physically pulling open our gates and coming in and hammering, hammering on the door. So just pray for, for armoring up our staff to have thick skin, no matter what's said to us. Um, uh, and just for the community, that God will enter the community and, and allow them to show his light in them and to simmer down tempers. We also need feet that will not stumble. We need to be as nimble as goats that climb on mountaintops. Um, and just mass prayer. I think all of us, we just want COVID-19 to just end. And we want our economy back to normal. We want people to not be imprisoned in their houses and you know, after week five, we can see grumpiness emerging because people mm. are so 
it's not a normal life not to have your freedom. So if we could just pray that our country and our president understands that people need to move and there will always be dangers and we need to spread more education and wisdom so that we can live a normal life using social distancing and using masks and sanitizing, which is all you can do to prevent the spread. Uh, practically, we do have food items that we purchase on a weekly basis, but as winter is approaching, we, we would like to do more soup parcels. So that would be the um, red lentil soup mixes, beef cubes, um, potatoes and carrots. And also, um, we're trying to look at foods that last longer. So the 500 gram red speckled beans, the 500 grams red lentils or yellow lentils or soup mixes. These are more popular items. We've got the starches. We just need the, the long life grains to keep things um, going. That will last more than two weeks if you put two packs in the parcel. What's, what's the solution for people to deliver stuff? Or are you wanting just send an EFT with some money for the food? You know, if, the, if they're a group, in, 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 and everything goes to one household that's collecting, then we can send a driver to fetch because we are essential services. We are now allowed to fetch. But it must be something that's a closed item, like cans or a packet. Um, if it's easier for the person who doesn't want to be disturbed with having people drop off items at their house, they might want to do an EFT, in which case they can just look on, on the poster that, was posted again and I can send it to you again with the banking information. Okay. Also, the other thing is if people at home are looking to do something, we're running out of sanitizers um, and specifically we can buy them five to five liters, but the point is putting them into little bottles um, because we hand them out with a bar of soap and We've done an outreach and we're going to do it again where we've made uh, sort of little wash basins using a two liter bottle with a hole in the cap. And they might fall in two liter bottles, make a hole in the cap, wash it with soapy water. And the idea is that people who don't have um, a tap, if they're a tenant without a tap, they can fill in a two liter bottle and use it as a tap by turning it over. And that the little hole would allow a drip of water coming through. And then we give that with bars of soap and sanitizer so they can wash hands on a regular basis. And they're right. always welcome to come to us. They collect, they're welcome to collect bottled water from us, which they have been doing. Uh, there isn't a water shortage in Westlake. Every homeowner has water and every tenant gets 20 litre buckets from uh, the homeowner every day. But we are sending out two litre bottles with a little hole in the cap so they can do a kind of primitive wash system just to get the, the idea of hand washing okay. into places. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bashni, and thank you, Austin, so much for um, the update and hearing something of uh, the work you're doing there. I will post on, make sure we're on both um, the Facebook and uh, the website that we post uh, the contact details and bank information for um, the West Lake United Churches Trust. Um, and if you would like to support them in some way, please um, do so, or if with a food collection, um, then please contact the office there as well and they would um, be able to organize a collection. Um, but let me just pray for you um, as we close and for the community there. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much um, for, uh, for Austin and for um, Veloshni and also I'm just thinking of uh, Veronica who's also part of the, the home-based carers there that uh, are part of our congregation at CHS. We want to thank you for their team and all the work that they're doing in that community. We pray for strength, Lord God. They're tired. <laughs> They're a little bit grumpy. <laughs> Everyone's a bit grumpy at this stage in the in the in the pandemic, Lord. Um, I just pray for your grace to be sufficient. We pray for your strength and your peace over that whole community in Westlake. Uh, we thank you for the um, provision of resources that are needed, and we pray, Lord, that that would continue um, in terms of food and and clothing and masks and all the bits and pieces that are needed, Lord, that you would provide through your body and that you would be glorified in that. So we just pray for your covering over this team and over this community in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much.
CHS. Um, this morning we continue looking at the series of the life of Joseph and we particularly focus on Genesis 41, the heading of which um, it is Pharaoh's dreams. And um, I've titled this morning, What Can the Story of Joseph Teach Us in Lockdown? Because I don't know about you, but I'm especially desperate at this time to see how can God's word help me in the unusual place in which we all find ourselves. And so I'd ask you if you haven't read the chapter, maybe you can stop the audio or the video, video now and just take the time to read Genesis 41 and then we can go from there. So in Genesis 41, um, it's the story of Pharaoh having vivid dreams about lean cows and fat cows and um, lean wheat and chunky stalks of wheat. And these dreams trouble him and he has the same dream twice over. Um, and he's looking for an interpretation for them. And so he asks his cupbearer, you know, can you tell me what these dreams mean? And then the cupbearer says, no, I can't, but I know this Hebrew who was in, who was in jail with, with me and he was able to interpret our dreams. So Pharaoh calls Joseph to say, I hear you the guy who can interpret my dreams for me. And, um, I think the first verse, there are just a couple of verses I want us to focus on this morning. There are many verses in this chapter, but just maybe a couple of them. And the first is verse 16. And verse 16 says, I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. And, you know, just reading that, I was reminded of many, many situations I found myself in. Um, particularly with my two friends, um, Jude, who's Scottish, and Anna, who's a Kiwi. Um, and when we were working together in both um, Sierra Leone and Tanzania, how many times we were in situations where it seemed impossible, it seemed like we didn't know what to do. But the, the, the thing we had to factor in all the time was that we couldn't, we didn't know how, we didn't know what, but God. And so I wonder for you, as you find yourself in this place of lockdown, um, what is a situation you are facing that um, either people are looking to you thinking you know the answer, um, but maybe you don't, but maybe at this time most of us, we, we don't know the answers to things, we don't know where our help is coming from. But God knows. And so I think one of the, the key lessons to learn from this chapter in the life of the story of Joseph is that for Joseph, it was never about his own um, achievement, his own ability. He was always pointing people back to God and saying, I can't, but God can, or even if it's God enabling him. So... Just yesterday, actually, I was having a, a telephone conversation with Basil Freitas, some of you um, know from church as well, and I was saying to him how um, I was fortunate enough to have him be the surgeon to operate on my shoulder a little while ago, and the, my shoulder was good and it was going great, and then a couple of weeks ago, I, I feel like I've had a setback, I feel like I don't... Um, I'm not able to do what I, I did before. And then Basil was just explaining to me maybe the situation I'm in, there's a stress component that causes the shoulder to behave in a certain way. And I've been so struck and I said to him that I've kept saying to God, as I work, I'm working in Kylie Hospital, I'm involved in the screening and testing tent. So um People are coming every day and we're testing them for coronavirus. And I keep saying to the Lord, Lord, I just need to be physically strong. Then I'll be able to cope with anything that comes my way. And as I felt like my shoulder wasn't getting better, I was getting more and more anxious and more and more stressed that I'm not physically strong. How am I going to manage? How am I going to be able to do it? And then I'm just struck by this lesson in Joseph is 
the point is it's not about me being physically strong it's not about me being able to do something it's about but god do I trust God in that situation to help me, for me to rely on him instead of me pressing on in my own strength and thinking if I'm strong enough, um, I'll be able to manage. And Basil was saying that he feels that that's exactly what God is teaching him, that, you know, he's, he's used to functioning life in one way, that we're self-sufficient, that we provide, that we're physically strong, that we're mentally strong. But yet in a time like this, many of those things get unraveled. And for me, my challenge is I'm not feeling physically strong. So I feel scared about am I going to be able to manage with the onslaught of patients that are coming to the hospital? And God is saying to me, it doesn't matter if you are not able, if you are not strong, but he is able, he is strong. So I would just encourage each of you, whatever you're facing, whatever position you're in, what, what you feel unable to do, God wants to come into that very place and say, but I am able, he is able, he will help you. You've got to just trust him, you've got to press into him. And then the story goes that Joseph then interprets Pharaoh's dreams and then he's hailed as the hero and he now then becomes the, 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 almost the state president of, of the land because um, Pharaoh knows now that there's going to be feast and there's going to be famine and um, Joseph is the person who's put in charge to manage this, to, to make storehouses and create um, uh, yeah, storage of the abundance during the, the, the years when there's m much harvest so that there will be provision for the, for the famine. And then it goes on to say that Joseph was also given a wife. And what I especially want to pay attention to is um, it talks that then Joseph was given a wife and then he... His wife gave birth to two sons in this time. And the name of the firstborn was Manasseh. And that means it is because God has, this is in verse 51, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my trouble in my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. And this is the second, so this is verse 51, 52, sorry. I just want us to focus on, it's like being fruitful in the very place that you would most like to be delivered from. And I think for most of us, affliction has come upon us in one way or another during this lockdown time in response to the coronavirus. And so I, I want us to focus on this fact that, yes, we are afflicted. Yes, we are hard-pressed. Yes, we feel overwhelmed. We feel um, like God has lost the plot. But the lesson, and I was just reading quite a few commentaries on, on this verse about um, being fruitful in, in the place of, of, in the land of my suffering. And so often our prayer is, Lord, please relieve me of the suffering so that I can be in the place of abundance and I can be fruitful and I can work for you. But my friends, I think what God is saying to us in this time is in that very place of your affliction, in that place of financial crisis, in that place of emotional overwhelmness in that place of not having enough food on the table if any food on the table God is saying in the midst of your affliction he will bring fruitfulness and yes it doesn't necessarily mean material fruitfulness but I think the lesson we learn through lockdown through times like this is many of the things we thought were important before are not important and we come back to some of the eternal truths of God and, and what is it that is important. 
and that we can't live without. So what God is saying is that he, even this, he is working for his eternal significance. And he will, he can make us fruitful in the very midst. And I, I have to be honest, for me, I feel so encouraged by that because the last week especially, I, I felt overwhelmed in the hospital. I felt like, am I going to manage? Am I, have I got what it takes? Um, yeah, and, and I've been shorter with people. I've not been patient like I should have been. It's, there's just been a lot. And I know we've all got our own stuff. But in that place, God can bring fruitfulness. And I was so struck this week outside the testing tent at Kylie Jasper. This gentleman came and so we screen patients first and we ask them some questions if they've got symptoms. And if they screen positive, then we would go on to do the nasal swab test to check for coronavirus. And he didn't screen positive. So we just reassured him and said, you know what, we don't need to screen today. But if you develop any of the symptoms, please be free to come back. We can screen anytime. But he was adamant that in order to go back to work, he needs to be able to show them a negative um, result and in, in order to go. And there was just a whole lot of things in his story that weren't adding up. And I found myself getting a bit frustrated with him. And then I, it suddenly dawned on me that here's this man standing here. I'm sure he's the provider for his family. He's longing to work, he's longing to find money and it would maybe be a, a tool for him if he could phone up his employer and say, you know what, I had a test and I'm negative, what am I able to do? And so I think in this time all of us are responding under stress in, in ways that maybe we're not pleased with ourselves or um, we just don't have the capacity to, to manage situations like we used to. But what I want to say to you is what God is showing through this, that even in our place of affliction, we can be fruitful for him. We can still be a light for him and, and shine it out. So also in, in relation to this name Ephraim and um, uh, the God's fruitfulness, it in many of the commentaries I've been reading, they link it to John 12, 24, which says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And I'm sure for, for many of you, for many of us, in the season, some things have died. We've, maybe our jobs or the things that gave us a sense of well-being, our busyness, our social calendar, our position in the community, our position in our workplace, many things have been buried, have been lost. But can we just be reminded about God's upside down kingdom that in the world of God, things are not as we interpret them to be from our human perspective. So when we lay those things down, when things die, when they're stripped from us, it allows for new life to come. And so let that be a, our prayer in the season, that even though we are in a place of affliction, that God will use this place for great fruitfulness. So that is my prayer for each of us. And I know I'm feeling like there's not a lot of fruit in my life, the fruit of the Spirit. At a time like this, my gentleness is not evident to all. My patience is its never my strong point, but it's not good. My joy, I'm having to grovel for it a little bit. So that's my challenge to myself in the week ahead. In this place of affliction, can I trust God to, with me, work out the fruit that he's wanting to bring forth? Amen.
as we pray a prayer and go out into the week, we, 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 we pray, God bless South Africa. Protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. And Father, we just pray that we would be continually seeking the graces that you call us to, no matter where we find them around us. We pray that you would be with us and that you would be working in us and through us. We pray, Father, that during these times, you would be continually leading us into places of hope, places that need hope, and you would be continually guiding us to where you are calling us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.